Now we are onto the eye. So first of all, we'll start with the front. This is the cornea, cornea, which which refracts light into the eye. So this part here, it's colour written, it controls how much light goes into the eye. Next we have the pupil, which is all of this section here. So this is the pupil. And and this is just the hole in the middle of the eye. Next we have the iris, iris, which are here and also here. And this controls how much light enters the eye, um, which is why in the solar eclipse um, you have to, you can't directly look at it because the iris can't control so well um, how much light enters the eye because the uh, moon comes in front of the sun so it can't exactly detect. Um, the lens is this circular bit in the middle lens and this also refracts light and focuses on the retina which is here um, which is the light sensitive part and it's covered in receptors called rods and cones which detect light so let's say here's some rods and they're more sensitive in dim light but can't see the color whereas the cones are sensitive to different colors but not so good in dim light and red green color blind lip blind lip Blindness is due to a lack of certain specialised cone cells. Uh, we also have these muscles here, which are the ciliary muscles, which will be useful later. And suspensory ligament, oh wait, oh sorry, the ciliary muscle is just on the edge here, just on the edge, whereas the suspensory ligaments are actually these ones, sorry. So the suspensory ligaments are these big ones here, and the ciliary muscles are just on the edge here. And finally this, this bit here is the optic nerve. Okay, so that's the main picture of an eye. Um, so now I'm going to tell you about focusing on near and distant objects. So the lens is elastic, so this is the lens here. And it's elastic, uh, which means it can focus the light by changing the shape, and it's known as... Wait, move this up a bit. Yeah, accommodation. So the lens is sorting out what your eye does, whereas you'd be sorting out where you're staying for your accommodation. So to look at distant objects, okay, I always get these wrong, wrong way round, and I haven't got a rhyme to tell you, but I did used to have one. But that's okay, we'll just remember it this way. So distant objects, the ciliary muscle relaxes, which allows the suspensory ligaments, these are both around here, remember, um, to tighten. And this makes it less rounded, so the light is refracted less. Yeah. Um, so that's looking at distant ob objects. So distance, distant, ciliary muscle relaxes, suspensory ligaments tight. And now on to close objects, where the ciliary muscle tightens or contracts, which lets the suspensory ligaments slacken. The lens is more rounded, so light is refracted even more. Okay, so which part are we on? Oh yes, we just did the near and distant objects. So now we're going to talk about, can you read that? Yeah, there Long and short sightedness. Some people are long and short sighted which occurs when we're unable to focus on near objects or distant objects. So to start with long sightedness is near objects. Oh, that's great. So this occurs when the lens is the wrong shape and it doesn't bend the light enough or the eyeball is too short so the lens doesn't work properly. So this is what it should be. The lens should be. You should look at the object. It will bounce and hit the back of the retina, so you get a clear image. But what actually happens is what actually happens is it bends it and it goes too far behind the retina. So the focal point is here, so that makes it um, um, difficult to see near objects. So you need um, glass or contact lenses with convex. So, to correct it back to this. Okay. Um, now, I am short sighted. So, 
around here. And this is when you can't focus on distant objects. This is, occurs when the lens is the wrong shape again or the eyeball is too long. Um, so instead of being like this one here, it actually looks like this. Take the picture. And then it goes like this. And so the focal point is here rather than here where the retina is. So to correct it, you need a convex lens, which is like this. Okay, so we're on to our next section, which is the central nervous system. The central nervous system consists of the brain, the brain and the spinal cord. Not quite sure what it looks like, there we go. And it's made up of three types of neurons, which means nerve cells, which are sensory, relay and motor. And when you detect a change in the environment, which is the stimulus, then the sensory neurons carry the information from receptors to the CNS. So, stimulus, receptors, sensory neuron, CNS, and then after it's reached the CNS, we have the motor neuron. So, the CNS in sends information to an effector through the motor neuron, and then it responds accordingly. There's stimulus, receptors, sensory neuron, CNS, motor neuron, effector, and response. Okay, so let's make something for this. Okay, so science really, science is really super because my ear relaxes. There we are. Science really, science really super, because my ear relaxes. So to stop you injuring yourself, you have a reflex action, which is where the nervous system uses electrical impulses to allow a very quick response. And they're automatic and they're done without thinking and they're really quick. Um, the conscious brain is involved, it's just the CNS, which is um, just a part of the CNS, which is automatic. Okay. On to our next part, which is neurons. Okay, so neurons transmit information around the body as electrical impulses. So it looks like this. Okay, great diagram here. Oh, this. So this is a motor neuron. Motor neuron. Um, so this part is just the cell body with a nucleus. Here we have an axon, so the impulses travels down. Um, then this is called an insulating sheet. Um, a branched ending, which is also known as a dendrite. And finally, these bits in the end, just here, and here called synapses. Okay, so first of all, the impulse is passed along the axon down here, and the neurons have branched endings, which are here. So they can connect with lots of other neurons like this. And they get passed along like that. Take another one. Um, they have a, so the sheath acts as an electrical insulator, so that speeds up the impulse. They're long, which also speeds up the impulse. The connection between two neurons is called a synapse, which is basically a time gap. No, so maybe it's not this, but it's meant to the gap between them. So anyway, the next diagram is going to look like this. So this is the axon of the, the first neuron, and this is the second neuron. So, the electrical impulse, which is coming down here, triggers the release of transmitter chemicals, which are stored in here. So there's lots of tiny chemicals here, and they diffuse across the gap, which is the synapse. The chemicals bind to the receptor molecules in the membrane of the next neuron, which sets the new electrical impulse in the next one, so the same thing happens. Um, stimulant drugs, which we learned about earlier, they increase the amount of chemical at some synapses, which increase the frequency of the impulses, so it makes the brain more active. Whereas depressants bind with the receptor molecules, which block the impulse coming, so this decreases the brain activity. Okay, so now we're going to move on to homeostasis. 
nothing to do with the symptoms of homo. Sorry. Okay, so homeostasis means maintaining a constant internal environment. Um, this is because the conditions in your body need to be kept steady so the cells can function properly, which involves balancing inputs with the outputs. For example, levels of CO2 need to balance with the levels of O2, and you also need um, to balance the water content in your body. It's supposed to be scales, I'm not, but it's, it's the ones they use in um, like Greek mythology, but never mind. You just need to control your body temperature too, so you need to get rid of body heat, of the excess body heat when you're hot, but retain heat when it's cold. And there's a mechanism for this called negative feedback, which um, works automatically to keep all these things steady. So this is a graph, a great graph. If this is body temperature, over here's time. So this is increasing the normal. So we have a response here, so it decreases um, whatever factor needs to decrease. And then if it gets too low, then it recognises it here and it increases it so it makes it normal. Um, so the internal environment tends to stay around the norm. Body temperature is controlled by the brain. Um, and it's about enzymes. And their optimum temperature is 37 degrees Celsius. There's a thermoregulatory centre in the brain which acts as your own thermostat. And it contains receptors that are sensitive to the blood temperature in your brain. Um, and the brain responds to information um, to bring about change in the temperature using the nervous and hormonal systems. For example, when you're too hot, the hairs lie flat. There's some hairs lying flat. Lots of sweats produced. Um, this is because when it evaporates, it uses heat from the skin, which transfers heat from the skin to the environment, which cools you down. And then here is the surface, and the blood vessels stay close to the surface um, and also widen, which allows more blood to flow near the surface, lots more blood, which can radiate more heat into the surroundings. And this is called vasodilation. And then when you're too cold, the hairs stand on end to trap a layer of air, so these are the air particles, and that will keep you warm. Um, little sweat is produced. Blood vessels near the surface constrict vasodilation, no, constrict vasoconstriction, so that less heat can be transferred from the blood to the surroundings, and you also shiver, which generates heat. Now we're on to controlling blood sugar levels. And the chemical that controls your blood sugar level is called insulin. So, um, glucose is pushed into the blood in many ways. So, carbohydrate food puts glucose into the blood. Um, normal respiration removes glucose from the blood. And exercise also removes glucose from the blood. But it must be kept steady. And the changes are monitored and controlled by the pancreas, which produces insulin. So if the glucose level in the blood, glucose, level is too high, then insulin is added. But if it's too low, insulin is not added. Insulin is a hormone, and hormones travel in the blood, so it can take quite a while for them to get where they're needed. So electrical impulses are sent along the nerves to travel much faster. Having diabetes means you can't control your blood sugar level. Okay, so type 1 is where the pancreas produces little or no insulin, uh, which means their glucose level can rise, which is very dangerous. So they have a carefully controlled diet. That's an egg. Let's say that's an egg. Some chicken. There we are. Great meal there. Um, so they control their diet, but they also need to inject insulin into the body at meal times, which makes the liver remove the glucose as soon as it enters the blood, um, and it's very effective. Um, and the other type is type 2, and it's where a person becomes resistant to insulin, which means the body cells don't respond properly to the hormone.